so good morning today I thought I would do another tutorial because I haven't done one for a long time and I've been really really busy making stock for some upcoming Christmas fairs that I'm really excited about um, so being as it's Christmas it's this time of the year or Christmas is on its way and that's the stock that I need to make I thought I would make today a robin um, I have a plant pot, a little plant pot that I'm going to sit the robin on the edge of when I've finished him but I'm going to do the armature to start off with and then I'm going to build the robin around that and put him on his plant pot when he's finished. So I'm going to start off with my very thin wire which I have forgotten the gauge but I will put that on the video um, so that you can see it but it's quite thin because we need to make some feet this is what it's going to look like uh, this is actually for an owl so it is a lot bigger than what the robin is going to be but we're going to have the three toes and the back toe and it's roughly going to be that shape so with my trusty ruler I'm going to measure 18 centimeters of wire so about there and that is how long I need for my first piece right so I've got my four pieces of wire roughly the same size and now I am going to twist them using my twee my um, pliers I'm going to twist them and I have said before in, in the mouse tutorial where I'm making the armature for the mouse, if you spread the toes out, it does get in, in between there. It does make it a lot easier to twist them evenly. Otherwise you end up, when you get up near the end, you end up with some of them twisted more than others. And that's a pain. So using my pliers to do the twisting. It's all saying, all staying nice and even. Okay, you don't, you want to, when you look at a robin's feet, they're actually, their toes are quite long. Their, their feet have twisted that one a little bit too much so if you do twist it too much don't worry because just use your pliers to straighten those wires out if I get my ruler out again roughly if you twist until your toes are about three centimeters long that'd be great and you want one to go behind and then you want three for the front but you are going to have to trim them up a little bit because the middle toe is always going to be longer than the side ones so I'm going to just take a little bit off each one please be careful where you put your wire bits at the end when you cut them off and the back toe is smaller again so we'll take that one to about there but don't go too mad trimming them because don't forget or, or if, you, if you've seen the mouse tutorial, you'll know what I do is I turn the wire ends over the wool. So you're going to lose a little bit more when you turn them over. Okay, so I'm just going to do the same thing to the other side. And then that will be ready for wrapping with wool. <laughs> Right, so there's my robin's feet. I've bent it in the middle. I'm just going to give that a little tweak with that to make it a bit more pointy. And then I'm going to bend his knees in. So about three, three and a half centimetres up the leg, you want to bend the knee. There we go. Straighten it all up. 
and there's our little robin's feet you'll need some brown wool and we're going to wind that starting in the middle all the way down the leg and all the way down the toes I have done this in a tutorial for a mouse which was very very similar um, but I will just show you the one side again in case you are following along with me while I'm doing this mouse so I will start off in the middle I'll tie that off so that it's attached there we go and I'm going to pull those apart because it does make it a lot easier you're going to find yourself getting caught up around toes and all sorts of things so you have to be very careful but I'm just going to wind it round all the way down to the foot if you pull your, your cord out or your wool out a little bit like this you'll find you can you, you kind of avoid the toes then otherwise you end up in all sorts of a tangle okay so I'm gonna I'll do the back toe first just wind it almost to the end up to just a couple of millimeters and then using my pliers pull that right back over the wall pull it right back over itself and pinch it down really tightly and if you pinch it right into this this woolly bit then if I get a bit close if you if you push it right into the wall then you won't have a sharp edge to catch on and then you wind the wool very carefully over that wire and back down over itself. That way nobody's going to stab themselves or hurt themselves on the end of that little toe. And I'll carry on doing the same to all of the toes. Okay, so I've wound all my toes now and I've got back to the heel of the foot and I'm just going to um, go back over the leg make sure that there's no wire showing all the way up the leg and when I get to the knee joint I'm just going to go over it a couple of times just to make that knee joint a bit fatter because on a robin their, their little knee joints do look a bit wider and then wind back up to my knot remember to keep holding the, the um, wool yarn tightly so that it's not going to unravel on itself and then I carry on and I do the same on the other side okay so I'm right back up to the top in the middle again and what I'm going to do now to finish it off is just tie that off so that that doesn't unravel using my teeth not good okay so just tie that off little trim and there you have it now one thing I will mention you'll notice on the toes you may have just a little tiny bit of wire showing where you've bent it over um, you can put a little blob of paint on that or if you've got a permanent marker a little mark just to make it look like it's a toenail okay so don't worry it, the thing is is if you wind the wall too close to the end you'll find that it will come up over the edge and then you'll have loops of wire uh, sorry loops of wool hanging off the end of the toe so by bending the wire over you're stopping the wool from coming off but you're not actually preventing loops from happening if I if I flick that underneath that could come over the top and cause a little loop so obviously you've wound the wool back over that piece of wire that's bent over to cover up that 
sharp edge that might have been there um, but it might leave that little bit of wire on show so yeah just touch it up with a little piece of a little just a little bit of paint or acrylic paint is is the, probably the best thing to do and then that will just look like a little little bit of a claw coming out the end the next thing that we're going to do though as well while we're on the subject of loopy bits is we're going to mix up a solution of um, PVA glue with a little bit of water and then we're going to paint these legs with it because that holds all the fibres together and that will also prevent you from getting loops coming over the edge of your toes. Okay, so that is our little Robin's feet. Okay, so Robin's legs are all dry now from their little bit of glue and all ready to go. So I'm going to just bend the toes up a little bit like so. Make them look a little bit more authentic. So even though I've put the PVA glue on them, they're still pliable. But it does just keep any loose ends in nice and tidy, or it, like I say, it keeps the end pieces in. So that's good. So there we go. We've got a little pair of little pair of feet, and now to make the body using my lovely core wool. I'm going to, he's a uh, Robin, obviously he has quite a fat belly, so I'm going to put the core wall in between the legs. Not the easiest of things to do. And around like so. So we've got, you know, kind of like a rough idea how it's going to turn out. And just be really mindful that when you are felting around the armature, Beakless Robin. Not very easy working out where the eyes are got to go, but if I'm basing my beak on there, then they need to go a bit further down than where I was putting them. So this tool is really handy. This tool is very good for pulling out when you've actually pushed the the wool in. You need to pull it out because you've made a mistake. My little braddle. And that's where my beak's going to go. I think a little robin would be easy, but actually, they are some unusual shapes. But I think we've just about got it. Okay, so I've chosen the colours that I'm going to use for him. This is going to be for his body. And this is going to be obviously his red breast. I've got some black to do his beak and um, some white to do his belly, obviously. 
and for part of his wings I'm going to be using normal felt so I'll be showing you how to do that in a little while and I'm going to start off with his white and his white's going to go all the way along his belly and underneath his tail so if I just break this up a little bit so it's easier to use okay spread that out a wee bit I'm not ramming my needle into him for several reasons one there's really no need this is this is his coat so it just needs to be felted into the outside part of his body and secondly because I am mindful of these wires that are going through here and I've managed to do so much without breaking the needle so it'd be good to get him finished without breaking it and I'm putting the wool in the direction that his feathers would go right so I'm now going to do his tail feathers and his wings and I need to do that before I actually do the brown wool on him um, because that will need to go over the top of what I'm going to do. So I will show you. I have some brown felt. I'm going to go with the dark one. For his uh, wings, they, they are in very much in a triangular sort of shape. When you have them, the bird here, it's going to come down here to a point and then up. So I'm going to cut out some wing feathers. That are quite skinny. Right, so, <coughs> put those to one side and those to one side. Okay, so I have got now my tail feather, my uh, wing feathers, and I'm going to overlap these like this. Okay, and my curve that I've cut in them is coming downwards. And then on top of that, I'm going to have some more going over the top of the first lot of feathers. So like that would be. And then I need to felt these together. And felting felt sheets it's not all that easy so to make things a little bit simpler for me I'm going to get some cool wool a little bit of cool wool and just put that on the edge because the fibres of the cool wool will go into the 
wing feathers. And then if I turn that over, I'm going to take some of that off. If I turn that over and put that over there, that's going to help because these white core wool is now going into the white core wool on the other side. So that's knotting together and that's going to hold these feathers together as well. And then I'm going to take my robin and put his feathers on here. just to hold these a little bit more securely right so there's my wing feathers so what I'm going to do now to also help to hold that in place is to get my brown wool now my orange is going to come in round here a wee bit but I'm going to put some of this over the top of my brown feathers just to blend in the colours and I don't mind if it's even a little bit fluffy because well they're feathers after all lovely that's gone quite well quite pleased with that I think I might put a bit of a bit of light on the subject that's a bit better okay so maybe a bit bright there we go so there we have a nice wing Then I am going to um, put the rest of his brown on him and his brown is going to just come underneath below his eye so I'm going to put a little bit there just put a wee bit under the eye and I have some his red breast up round there, so bring this round to here and then take it over his back. Now we want to give the impression that that's going under his wing now, so I'm going to curve that. That's his wing, I'm going to curve that around underneath there like that. and then get it underneath his wing okay so I'm going to carry on doing this until I get all his brown in place there will be patches in a minute where you'll need to add a, a little bit of extra white or a little bit of extra brown but you'll see when you've when you've got him done you've got most of his coat on you'll be able to see what needs touching up, what doesn't. I'm going to go on and do his other wing and then I'll be ready to show you how to do his tail feathers. Okay, so his tail feathers aren't quite as technical as his wings because they are pretty much all one length. So I'm going to cut them instead of cutting them coming down to a point though at the end I'm going to cut them rounded at the end of the tail I folded it over I'm trying to 
I'm rushing it, I'm trying to uh, cut two at a time. Okay, so I'm going going to do about six of these, and what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to do the thing that I did before with a little bit of the core wool, and I'm going to I'm going to lay these out in such a way that. first two will be side by side. You can always trim up these little fluffy bits when you've finished and then I'm going to overlap them slightly, the three. Like so. But I do want to keep them close together at the end. I don't want them separating too much so if I fold that over like that and that over like that and then I can felt them in place. Okay so then if you take your robin because I, what I have done is I've, I've left his bottom I haven't actually covered that with the brown as yet because I knew I was going to be putting his tail feathers on and I've put it so that the the bits that go that were over the top are now underneath if that makes sense now to make them stand out like they're supposed to he has his, his, this white part of his tail continues so I'm going to just bring that round a little bit and then let's get his wings out of the way needle felt up from underneath okay and I'm going to bring a little bit I'm going to get a bit more cool wool to add on to there just to bring that to the point because it does they do come to a point let's make sure I get the feathers in the right places first before I finalize the position that one that one that one and that one okay right there we go so now I need to cover up this bit of core wall with some white And now for the brown bit to go down over his tail. bit behind the neck does come in quite slim from behind the eyes. Right the next bit is his beak and I'm using this black. They have very very dark brown almost black beaks and this is going to be the tricky bit so I'm just going to start off with attempting, ideally I would use core wool for this, but I have run out of black core wool, so I'm using merino, which is going to prove to be a bit tricky, but we'll get there. I'm 
trying to roll it now. So as I'm stabbing it, I'm rolling it. Because I want it to sort of form a kind of a cone shape. And then what I'm going to do is just trim off any fluffy particles that are sticking out. And I'm going to take a very small bit of white, white tiny this little bit of white, and just attempt to have that come down the side, go through like that. This is where you need six pairs of hands. And ready for the eye. And we'll take some of this orange. And I'm just following the contour of this brown bit under the eye that I put in. Pushing that fibre through. A bit more orange. Some glue. Push that right into the hole. Oh. And don't let it stick to your fingers. There we are.